Hi, my name's Rich, and today I want to talk about the Drake Warden, which is an Unearthed Arcana subclass for the Ranger in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. And the reason I'm bringing this up now is because a couple of days ago, Fizban's Treasury of Dragons was announced, and it's a dead cert that the Monk and the Ranger Unearthed Arcana for Dragons is going to be included in the book. Now, we don't know if there's going to be any modifications at the moment, but when the book's released, I'll leave a pinned comment and inform you guys what the changes are. But without further ado, let's get started. So, out of the Ranger classes, you already have the Beastmaster as a companion subclass. And I think the Drake Warden kind of outstages it a little bit. The Beastmaster has some unique advantages, but the Drake Warden is going to be thematically appropriate if you're going to do any of the content in Fizzbands when it releases. And yeah, I want to go over each of the abilities for the Drake Warden and see how they measure up. First off, you get a D6 for the Drake Warden Origin Table, which I think is a good amount of options. If you're lacking in imagination or need some inspiration, then this is a perfect table. This is the How to Train Your Dragon class, so I think if you can try and persuade someone to play this, if they're a fan of the movies, then it should work quite smoothly. At third level, you get Draconic Gift, and you gain access to the Thaumaturgy Cantrip, which is a great cantrip to have. It doesn't have any combat applications, but the utility is astronomical. It's on par with Minor Illusion in the fact that the more imagination you have, the more powerful this cantrip can be. You also gain access to the Draconic Language. You can read, write, speak, all of the above. That's not a massive bonus, but having an extra language is never going to hurt anybody. At level 3, you also get Drake Companion. This is where the, the real meat of the subclass is. As an action, you can summon the Drake that's magically bound to you. It appears in an unoccupied space you can see within 30 feet of you. And it's magically summoning it, so it's not like it has to fly out of the sky or anything like that. So you should be able to summon it in the Underdark or any underground situation. But be aware of its size when you're summoning it in narrow corridors. Especially in later levels where the size changes. Now the Drake shares a lot of the similar rule sets to other pet classes in the fact that you need to command it to do something, otherwise it's just going to stand there and do the dodge action. And this is a good way to use up your bonus action. And as a ranger, you want to be trying to attack and use your action for dealing damage, and then using the Drake as a bonus action also helps. I think if you use the Drake in combination with a ranged weapon, that really helps the ranger shine. This is less of a melee focus class and more of a ranged class. You can summon the Drake once every long rest, and you can summon it again if you use a spell slot. Now the ranger gets a very limited amount of spell slots already, so you need to be conservative with this, but the drake's such a game changer that it's hard to find a spell that's more useful than summoning the drake. There is a limit to the amount of time you can summon it. The number of hours equal to your proficiency bonus, so this does stack up at later levels. At looking at the stats sheets for the drake, looking at the stats sheets for the drake, the armor class is okay, but it's not amazing. The hit points, again, you need to be careful with sending this guy into battle, he's not going to tank loads of hits. Good idea for scouting because it does have dark vision. The downside is it doesn't fly. And it's worth noting the Draconic Essence, you can choose it as you summon the Drake, so you can switch it around depending on the situation. Uh, this is rather helpful, for example, if you're going up against a lot of mechanical enemies, there's no point summoning the Poison Drake because most of them are going to be immune. So pick your elements wisely. The main thing you're going to be doing with the drake is going for a bite and the bite also has elemental effects with it as well. The drake can also help buff up uh, people around it with the infused strikes ability. This doesn't have to apply to the ranger. If you have a fighter in the front line that you want to help out then pass on some of the infused strikes. Now the drake does have relatively good strength so that's worth noting but if you're going to make any intelligence or charisma saves then good luck with that. If you want to tell me how I got something wrong and the Drake's abilities are wildly out of scale with what I'm describing, then don't be afraid to leave a comment. I'd love to get your feedback. And if you want to continue the discussion even further, there's a Discord I've linked in the description. You're more than welcome to join it and join the conversation. At level 7 you get the ability Bond of Fang and Scale. 
This buffs up you and your Drake because you gain resistance depending on the Drake's Draconic Essence. And the Drake can finally grow wings and fly. It can deal with an extra d6 damage on its bite. So this is a great way to strengthen the Drake. I think that at level 3 flying may be a bit too powerful. This is exemplified by how powerful the Summon Familiar spell is for the wizard. If you choose an owl or some sort of creature with flying and dark vision, then it can really take the sting out of any surprises that the DM has set up for you. By this time, at level 7, you're going to have the extra attack you get from level 5, so you want to keep your attack actions for, well, attacking, and your bonus actions for your drake. At level 11, you get Drake's Breath. You finally get the drake having a cone area of effect weapon. As standard, you have to choose an element, but it's a 30-foot cone, and it's on a dex save. It takes 66 damage on a failed save, or half as much as a successful one. And at level 15, which we'll cover in a minute, it does buff up to 8d6, so that's handy. I do like that it does scale up with level, because I know there's some abilities in some classes where it almost feels stagnant. Some of the abilities that are great at third level when you get to level 16, 17, quite useless. Also, limiting the Drake's Breath ability to a third level spell slot, it reigns in the power. The problem is, when you get to level 11, the wizard has already been casting fireballs for a good six levels. But don't think about this too harshly. Being able to cause a potential 66 damage in an area of effect as a bonus action is quite good. So finally, level 15, you've reached the keystone. Your drake has got as powerful as possible. It grows to a large size, and its bite attack deals an extra d6 damage. This also gives you a really powerful ability. When you're within 30 feet of your drake, you can use your reaction to give yourself or your drake resistance to that instance of damage. It doesn't say what damage type, it just says resistance to damage. So I would assume that's any damage that's incoming. It reminds me a little bit of the Mentor Fighter, which is a subclass that I developed for the fighter, which you can get over for free over on the Patreon. You can also download it on the Kofi, they're both are linked down below. So starting out at level 3, the Drake is small. The fact that it grows as you grow as well is a great way to show character development. And I think that you can tell a really interesting story with the Drake. It's not just about the mechanics, which are quite good. But it's also about the story you're telling with the subclass as well. I'm sure that you'll be able to create a loving bond with the Drake, and I'm sure there's some great downtime and roleplay opportunities available. I'm just trying to wonder, where does the Drake go when it's not summoned? Is it just chilling out on a pile of gold, or...? The Drake Warden is almost like a Pokemon subclass. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye!